Today's video is made possible by Hulu Plus. For a free extended two week trial period, head over to huluplus.com forward slash TOT. Hello and welcome back once again to another edition of Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Eric, your host, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the late 2013 Mac Pro versus the late 2010 Mac Pro. Now, some people out there are gonna be like, oh, no, hey, it's Mac stuff, you know, we don't really care, but a lot of people out there actually own this machine. Now, mine, the old one it is, the 2010, is the quad core 2.8 version. The one that we're testing against, the new one, it's 3.5 and is the six core processor. So there is some differences there, but a lot of people out there actually do own this 2010 machine. A lot of people I've talked to online and everything, you know, people bought this machine because it was what was really the standard for the last few years. We've been using my recording studio now for close to four years, and now the new one has come out. Now, the new one also has 1866 memory, it's got 32 gigs of it. Mine's only got 16 gigs and it's a lot slower memory. Now, I also upgraded mine. Now the new one, it comes with a 256 gigabyte PCI SSD. I got one from Otherworld Computing. That's inside this one over here and that's a 240 gigabyte PCI SSD. I also upgraded my video card to the latest EVGA GTX 680. At the time, that was a top line thing that it could be. The new Mac Pro, however, comes with two D500s. Now these things did not get recognized in a couple of tests. So we just kind of admitted those tests out of there because we didn't think that would be very fair. But you guys will see that this little machine is basically what, a quarter of the size of this one? Now I know that kind of goes both ways. Obviously, inside this machine, I can upgrade the shit out of it internally. I could even upgrade the CPU a little bit farther if I want to. I could still push this machine a little bit, but look how big it is. It's big, it's bulky, you can't really move it around. The new Mac Pro though, the one we call the trash can, look how small it is. I mean, you could literally unplug the thing, throw it almost inside your camera bag and take that wherever you're going. Now I know obviously a monitor is not gonna be included in that, but still, quarter of the size, twice as fast, runs a little bit warm, but not so hot. A lot of people out there, I just wanna mention, so I saw you guys mentioning, oh my God, it gets so hot. No, it doesn't get so hot, you could like fry an egg on it. It's not like that at all. Obviously it gets warm, but this machine's virtually quiet. And also for people out there who are just like, you know, looking like saying, hey, maybe I would like to purchase this new Mac Pro. Well, now we're going to have the scores so you can see them. So even though this is a comparison video comparing the old 2010 to the new 2013, well, you can still use these scores for a reference point. So let's go. All right, folks, so let's start off with the Black Magic Disk Speed Test. Now, the 2013 six core Mac Pro has a write speed of 803 megabytes a second, a read of 915 megabytes a second. The older 2010 four-core Mac Pro had a write speed of 300.5 megabytes a second and a read of 617.5 megabytes a second. So you can see a vast improvement on your disk speed test. Next up, Geekbench 3 64-bit, a very popular test. Many people use it. The 2013 six-core Mac Pro had a single-core score of 3,612 and a multi-core score of, yeah, get ready to drop your pants, 20,710. Holy sh**. The 2010 four core Mac Pro had a single core score of 2,179 and a multi-core score of 8,520. Big landmark difference there as well. Next up, Luxmark version 2.1. Now this test open seal performance, which is something that these new Mac Pros are supposed to really excel at. Now the 2013 six core Mac Pro had a score of 3,194 K-rays a second. The 2010 four-core Mac Pro got 1,032 K rays a second. That's a vast, vast improvement in OpenCL performance. If you're somebody out there who's doing a lot of business rendering, this is gonna come in very handy. Next up, Cinebench R15. The 2013 six-core Mac Pro in OpenGL gets a score of 76.67 frames per second. The 2004 core Mac Pro got a 44.8 frames per second in the same test. Now in the CPU test, the 2013 got a score of 961 CB, while the 2010 got a score of 459, almost double the score in that. Next up, we have Unigen Valley 1.0. Now this is one of the tests that actually did not see both of the D500 cards in the new Mac Pro. And so in this particular test, we're not gonna get that true performance of what we've seen a Crossfire like we would if we were using a regular gaming machine. So for gaming, this might not be the you know, absolute you know, end-all be-all solution, but for those people doing OpenCL testing, this thing's still gonna be kicking major ass. 
The 2013 6 core Mac Pro has an extreme preset of 29.4 frames per second and a score of 1230. Its maximum frames per second was 51.4. Now, on the other one, the 2010 4 core Mac Pro that has my EVGA 680, it had an extreme preset of 40.9 frames per second and an overall score of 1710, and on the maximum frame per second, 65.9. Like I said, this is pretty much the only test in here where we see the video card in my older machine taking advantage of it because it's not really geared right now to take advantage of those two D500s. Now, the last test we did is more geared for real world uses. This is pretty much something that anybody could do at home. And this is the brand new Final Cut 10. Now, what we did is yesterday's video of the 290X that you guys saw us do, we actually took that video and we transferred it back and forth to get these scores. Now, the video that we exported was six minutes and 29 seconds at 1080p. Now, it took five minutes and 29 seconds to export this video on the 2013 six core Mac Pro. Now on my 2010, it took much longer, nine minutes, 24 seconds. Now you guys can clearly see that this is going to be an advantage for people who actually make money off their time. Because if it's gonna take you twice as long to export your video, that means twice as long you're gonna be sitting around picking your nose, scratching your butt, doing whatever you're doing, wasting that time. So with the new Mac Pro, you can see that you're gonna cut your workload time in half, and that's gonna save you some money, which is something a serious business person always looks at. Now I know everybody's gonna ask, 4K, 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 all right. Let's take a look at the 4K scores. Now the video we used in this 4K video is two minutes long. It took five minutes and seven seconds to export it on the 2013 six core Mac Pro and nine minutes, 20 seconds on the four core 2010. Once again, a serious difference in export times. All right, folks, so before I bounce at her, just wanna say that the video that we use in 4K is by Blackmagic. If you guys would like to have access to that video, we will have it down there below the like button in the description. We'll also have more information about what's going on with this video. Also, before I totally get out of here, I wanna give special thanks once again to Hulu Plus for making this video possible. Without their support, hey, you guys might not have seen this video today. So I know many of you PC users out there know what Hulu is, but do you guys really know what Hulu Plus is? Because Hulu Plus is like a whole different level. Hulu Plus is like taking that standard video card, slapping a water cooler on it, and getting the absolute most bang for your buck. Just all kinds of content. Now, with the standard Hulu, you can only watch it on your PC. But with Hulu Plus, baby, you can take that on the go, on your tablet, on your phone. With Hulu Plus, you can catch up on current shows, binge on old favorites, or watch a great movie. Stream as many TV shows and movies as you want, anytime, anywhere. You can also check out exclusive content including Hulu originals like The Wrong Mans and Behind the Mask. Best of all, you can watch all of this content in HD. Now, I know a lot of people always ask, how can you guys support the site? Well, at this time, you can support the site and get your guys a free extended trial period just by going to huluplus.com forward slash T-O-T, where you can enjoy Hulu Plus for two weeks. So that's pretty much it, folks. You guys can see that there are a lot of differences between the late 2013 and the late 2010 models. Mine's obviously bigger, a lot more expandability on the inside. Now, I have no Thunderbolt, though, whatsoever. I could buy a card and stick it in there if I wanted to, but I don't have that right now. This machine is totally geared for having everything through a daisy chain off of it. If you guys watched when I showed you guys the unboxing and first look of it, this thing has lots of expandability as far as that stuff goes. So that's the way it's meant to be. This one's not meant to be that way. Now, for me, I run a recording studio, video editing studio, Everything works fine on my Mac Pro. I'm gonna hold off right now on upgrading because the $4,000 price tag on this one, right now with me trying to get other stuff is like, mm, and this one's still working. But I will say that given the opportunity and I had the cash, I would jump on this new product. Why? Well, for one thing, look how small it is. It doesn't take up very much desk space whatsoever. It looks awesome. If you actually got some tricked out badass speakers, I mean, your desktop could actually look pretty futuristic with this thing. Or, you know, you could have it so you have your trash can on your desktop. I'm just playing. But there you guys have it. There are a lot of significant differences between the two machines. The 2013 is coming to market about $4,000. You could probably pick up my machine for about two grand with everything I have in it. So there are some price differences. But for those people out there who might be considering either buying an older Mac or a newer Mac, or just considering buying a Mac, we've brought you the scores and the information you need to know to make your buying choice. So I'm Elric. We'll see you guys back here on Tech in Tomorrow. See ya.